Welcome, welcome everyone to the God in the Midst radio broadcast, Gitem Radio. We praise God for this opportunity to come and share with you the Sunday School lesson for this morning. This is the Sunday School lesson edition. Ooh, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We glorify you and we magnify you. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We ask you now, dear Heavenly Father, to bless us as we uh, teach this word this morning. Anoint us afresh as we listen to this word this morning. Just be as you promised in your word, where two or three are gathered in your name. You said that you would be in the midst. Thank you, Lord, for being in the midst of us this day. We plead your blood, dear Heavenly Father, o over this technology. We plead the blood, dear Heavenly Father, over all that is said and done during this 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 session, this broadcast, dear Lord. Bless now those that are listening now and those that are going to listen in the future, dear Lord, that they might not just be hearers of your word, but they also may be doers of your word. We give you glory, God. We give you praise and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, welcome everyone to the God in the Midst, Get em Radio, Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy. Our lesson today comes from uh, the, the, the book of James, the book of James, James chapter 3, James chapter 3, and uh, something I've started doing, I'm letting, I'm, I'm letting the... Um, uh, Bible Gateway read our passage of scripture and uh, our passage of scripture of concentration today is James chapter 3 verses 1 through 12 um, but I'm going to let it probably read the whole thing it takes about 2 minutes almost 3 minutes so just sit back and listen for a minute chapter 3 not many of you should become teachers my fellow believers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Mercy, mercy, All God. kinds of mercy, animals, God. birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Mm -hmm. Let them show it by their good life, mm -hmm. by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy mercy, and selfish mercy. ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, mm -hmm. demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, mercy, there God. you find disorder and mm -hmm. every evil practice. Oh, Lord God. But the wisdom yes. that comes from heaven is first of all pure, pure. then peace-loving, yes. considerate, 
submissive, mm -hmm. full of mercy and good fruit, yes. impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace mm -hmm. reap a harvest of righteousness. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, uh, you know, the concentration of the lesson is uh, verses uh, 1 through 12, but I wanted us to, to hear all the way down to the final verse of chapter 3 because that final verse talks about, <laughs> excuse me, now the fruit of righteousness is sowed in, in peace by those who make peace. Yes, yes, yes. I wanted that to be, be into our hearing this morning uh this lesson is 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 talking about that untamable tongue that untamable tongue uh oh have mercy and our concentration for this lesson is dealing with the faith discipline of 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 having uh knowing how to speak knowing how to speak that 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 discipline to 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 be able to trust God uh to 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 tell you what to say and how to say it uh and because that's the only way that that the tongue can be tamed so God word God word tells us that that the tongue has incredible power uh we can we can use our tongue to bring blessings and and life or curses and death the, 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 this, the same sticks and stones may, may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. It's simply not true. Our, our tongue, our tongue, our tongue can be the most powerful thing to control, the most difficult thing to control. And, and, and leave us with great regrets if we use our words to hurt. But there is hope, praise the Lord. The Bible tells us that with the help of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord, we can, we can have power and control over our tongues. And so today we, we're concentrating on the James passage of Scripture, James chapter 3, that deals with the tongue and, 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 and how untamable it is. And then we'll bring up some other scriptures later on to talk about how how to how to how to really put that tongue, what that tongue is supposed to do to help us bring it under subjectivity. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. And so, so the background of this lesson, and I ain't, I'm, I'm looking. Oh, let me let me let me run this thing down. The key verse, the key verse is verse eight a. It says, "No human." can can tame their tongue. That's something a human cannot do, and we'll get, get deep into that later. The key concept for this lesson is we cannot control the things we say, or we can, excuse me, control the things we say with God's help. Hallelujah. Our keys for kids um, is our tongue is a small part of the body, but it is powerful. Number two, our words should be encouraging and helpful to others. And number three, our words should praise and honor God. And so as we look at this lesson, we look at this lesson today, we're going to look at, we're going to look at our, our facts that these metaphors, illustrations um, that, that James used about the tongue. We're going to look at some, some of those and uh, then, um, uh, in addition to that, we're going to uh, deal with uh, the biblical facts here or biblical principles to emphasize the, the urgency of the importance of speech. Amen. And then in addition to that, our daily application is, is that we want to, to, to walk out of this lesson with the, with the mindset to praise and honor God and to, to give encouraging words to others. Amen. Amen. And so my outline, my outline, I, I, I turned to, uh, 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 Lady Sandra and she's teaching this in, in Sunday school for the kids today. And, uh, I turned to hers. I got all kind of different outlines, but, but I like the outline she put together. Um, um, uh, and I'm going to 
you just give a couple of the points of it. It says, even teachers must watch what they say. That's verses one through two. And then uh, the tongue, small but mighty, that's verses three through six. Uh, then no one can tame the tongue. That's verses seven through eight. And then with our tongue, we speak both good and bad. And that's, that's, that's James chapter three, verses nine through 12. Now, now, so, so that's, that's a simple, uh, uh, child, uh, 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 outline that, that, that if you're a small child, you can, you can hear, you can hear this text in that line. I mean, in that outline, um, the commentary's outline was, was much stronger. He's talking about a, a sobering warning, a sobering challenge, a sobering reality and a sobering contradiction. And, 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 and all of them kind of play, play together in, in, in uh, outlining this lesson today. As we know, James is the half brother, or they call him, but I call him the brother of Jesus. And, and he was the focal point of, of the uh, pastor, if you will, of the uh, uh, Jerusalem church. He, he didn't believe in Jesus before his death, burial, and resurrection. But after his death, burial, and resurrection, I, I could see James. I laugh about it all the time. I could see James going, oh, now I understand how he was doing that. Now I get who he was. Yeah, yeah. And James became a very powerful figure in the early church. And in this situation, when he put together the book of James, I, I liken the book of James to a, 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 a series of sermons, if you will, that, that, that James had preached and taught over the years, and he just bringing all of that, all those nuggets into one place and kind of capture it so that 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 that, that his legacy of, of what he preached and teached all the years that he was the pastor over Jerusalem were captured. And so that that's why some people, when they read James, they're like, well, look like he's jumping from one place to another. Well, the, these are the teachings that that over the years that 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 he really wanted to drill into those who were his parishioners, those who were his 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 members of the Jerusalem church. And in particular, in particular, in particular, uh we start this book off. This book is sent to those who 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 are of the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So, so it's, it's to the people who were Jew, uh, Christian Jews or Jewish Christians who were being ran out of Jerusalem and went to all the uttermost parts of the world. And he wanted to, to give them some words of encouragement, some words of direction, some words of, 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 of correction even. And so that's, that's where we are today. And so when we get to this third chapter, he starts off saying, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that you shall receive a strict judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in words, he is a perfect man able also to bridle the whole body. So he's talking to, 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 to Christians. He's talking to, 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 to Christian brothers. So, so don't, don't get this all mixed up that he's talking to the world. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to people who have a relationship with Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. They have placed their faith in him. And, and he says, Watch it now. I want to give you a warning. Not many should become teachers. Some translation says masters. But, but what it's saying is you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't become a teacher or a preacher in some official function. Because if you do, you got you got you 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 got some high standards that you have to adhere to. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, that's why the word of God tells us that, that we are to rightly divide the word of truth, that, that, that we might be able to speak it. And then later on, he said, speak it in season and out of season and speak that which needs to be spoken. During the time of James, it was, it was an oral history going on. People were, were itinerant preachers and they would go around with, 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 in their oral tradition sharing stories and sharing the word of God. And, 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 and they didn't study. And in other cases, they were false preachers, false teachers, false prophets. And, 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 and we still see that today. You know, I learned a long time ago, my, 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 my pastor uh, uh, taught us a little lesson about uh, uh, feeding the hogs, doing hog, hog fattening season. And, 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 and he says that, that, that what, what happened when they pull up the, the wagon, they would dump the, 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 the corn at, the, at, at one end of the hog pen. And inevitably, there'd always be one, one pig, one pig, one hog that raced and, and, and beat all the rest of the hogs to, to, to the pen, to, I mean, to where the corn was in the hog pen. And then he would grab an ear. He would grab an ear of that corn, and then he would take off running right back where the other hogs are. Now, instead of the hogs going to the big old pile of corn, they, they, they would turn around and not go to the big pile, but they'll chase the one who got the little ear. And, and so it, 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 the symbology here is, is that, 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 that there's a whole big pile of the word of God for us to study and grab a hold to especially as teachers and preachers. But what we end up doing, we go and chase after the one that's got this one word. And we'll follow after them. And we have to be careful for that. And, and as teachers, as teachers, as preachers, we, we got to be careful to tell the people, look, don't, 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 don't come following me just because I got this word. There's so much more word. Let's go over back to there, that big pile, and study the rest of that word. Oh, hallelujah. And so here we have, he says, that there's going to be strict standards for those who are teachers. You, you, you're going to be put under a heavy judgment and a heavy criticism. And so be careful. Be careful. Because here's the deal. For we all stumble in many things. And if one does not stumble in the word, he is perfect. And also, and, and, and able also to bridle the whole body. That stumbling. Be, be humble before you stumble. It's okay. And I learned this in all walks of life. It's okay to say, IDK. Now, for, that's for the young folks. For the old folks, it's like this. I don't know. I don't know IDK. I don't know. Because it's some things we just don't know. But but give me a few days, I'll look it up. But give me a minute, I'll find it out. So, so be humble as a teacher. Don't just come and create something up out of your mind, but be humble. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, so, so that's, that's that's that that right there is that sober and roaring that 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 we are under high strict standards and 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 nobody nobody is perfect nobody that I, I don't care how good your pastor teach I don't care how good that be nobody's perfect let me say it another way nobody's infallible mm-hmm I said it I said it, I said it, I said it. Yep, yep, yep. Nobody's infallible. So he, he goes on in the text. He goes on in the text in verse 3. And he says, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and, and we turn their whole bodies 
Look also at ships. Although they are so large and, and are, are driven by fierce winds, they, they are turned by a very small rudder. Wherever the pilot desires, even so, the tongue is 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 a little member. The tongue is a little member, and boast great things. See how great a forest, a a little fire kindles, and the tongue. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a fire. A, a, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that, that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And is set on fire by hell. Oh, have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. The tongue is small, but mighty. And we have this sobering challenge. We have this sobering challenge. How to tame and put this tongue under control. Listen to this tongue. It, it, it says, we, it, we, we, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. And the bit goes in the horse's mouth. And, and when you want the horse to stop, you pull on that rein, which pulls on that bit, and that horse will, 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 will stop because it's got to do something to stop that pain from that bit pulling on them. You want them to go to the left, you pull to the left. And that horse turns here and goes to the left. You pull to the right, and it'll go to the right. Just by pulling on his jaws and his tongue, you can turn the whole body of this big old horse. We liken it to the steering wheels in our cars. You turn left, it'll go left. You turn right, it'll go right. A little thing controlling a big thing. That's how our tongue is. And he says, look, look also at a ship, although they are very large. And they got to deal with the forces of the winds and the waves that come at them. They are turned by a little rudder. A rudder that the pilot is able to guide and direct the ship. And even this, he says, even so. He, he, he puts these two analogies together and he says, even so, is a little member. The tongue is a little member. Small thing in your mouth. And it boasts great things. Yes. So we got bits in the horse's mouth that control their direction. And we got these rudders on ships that, 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 that direct them. But that tongue, oh mercy, it's boastful. It's like a fire. And it's considered the worst part of the body. Because that little tongue can corrupt the whole body. We've experienced these terrible fires in California doing this this season with, with the winds blowing and, and they've come to find out that the little fires were, were started by, by those who were homeless living 
out in the woods and stuff, and the fires got started by that. Those fires created all kind of a damage. He says the tongue is fire. It's fire. So once it lets something out, it's just going to burn everything that it comes in contact with and create a large forest fire. And when the tongue is used as a fire, that old tongue is set on fire by hell. So 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 now let me let me let me break this thing down. Girl, she keep on messing with me. I'm going to show her something. I'm going to lay my religion down and tell her like a T.I.S. Oh, mercy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell it like it is. Yeah, you're going to kindle a fire. We have so many family members that 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 are, are, are not speaking to each other because of a little fire. In the tongue and generations have went by and children don't even come together. Cousins and second cousins, they're because of a little fire. We got people at our jobs that that that, that said things and, and said and this, that, and, that, and then that, that little fire. That little fire. That little fire. At the schools. Oh, these days it's terrible. Because they got Snapchat and they got Twitter and and, and uh oh. Uh-oh, did I say Twitter? Yeah, even, even our government leader, even our president using that Twitter, that little fire starter, that little tongue in Twitter causes a whole lot of forest fires. Mercy God, mercy God. And what, what happened? Is that, that the tongue can corrupt the whole body. It can set everything on fire. Because you can't control fire. Once fire starts, it's going to take its course. Mercy God. So we have a sobering challenge. How can, how can we stop letting our tongue spew fire like a flame-thorn dragon? Oh, mercy, God. And so, the text goes on. James says in verse 7, Every kind of beast and bird or reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. So we learned previously that the tongue is like fire. Now we hear that the tongue is, is an unruly evil and is deadly poison. Oh, mercy. The tongue. No one can tame the tongue. This is a sobering reality. No man. You got to catch that now. No man, no man. It, it, it ain't talking about God, it's talking about man. No man can control the tongue. Man, man has learned how to tame every animal under the sun. You can see little dogs going Jumping through hoops, you you can see the 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 the, the dolphins and and the whales swimming at at Sea World. You 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 can see all the little animals in the circus going around doing because man has tamed them, but no man. 
can tame the tongue. Oh, mercy. That's, that's sobering. And that tongue is full of evil, like a poison. And nobody, nobody wants to touch poison or be associated with evil. Mm -mm -mm. So now we go to our last three verses. He says, with it, we bless our God and Father. And with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. My brethren, this these things not ought to be so. Can I stop right there for just a second? James is giving us this, this, this sobering reality that goes along with this sobering contradiction. And he's saying to us, how can this tongue praise God and yet still curse men? We, we speak blessings. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then at the same time, we gossiping and backbiting with the same tongue. He said, this, this just shouldn't be. It, it shouldn't be, y'all. It, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. That James says, this, this thing shouldn't be this way. And he breaks it down. He says in verse 11, does a spring spring forth fresh water? And bitter water or salt water from the same opening? Can, can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no, no spring shall yield both salt water and fresh. We got to allow God to take this contradiction of our tongues and put it under subjectivity. James, James has, has laid out this sobering contradiction and, and, and we have to understand that, that there's so many things in God's word so many points in God's word to tell us about our tongue. And we, we, we got we to gotta dig into that word and trust what that word says to help us to give full control to God for our tongue. The word of God. And Proverbs says, Proverbs 8, 10 says, verse 20, from the fruit of their mouths, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Don't you love life? Don't, don't you love being blessed? We'll speak blessings. There's power of life and death in our tongues. 
over in chapter 17 of Proverbs, it tells us the one who has knowledge uses words with restraint. Whoever has understanding is even tempered. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent. Discerning if they hold their tongue. I, I've had to learn. I've had to learn over the years because my tongue was, I, I'm, I'm that one that just let my tongue used to just go, wow. And God has tamed it. He's, he's getting my tongue under control. And I have faith now and discipline to trust him and don't say a word till he says something. And so lately, <laughs> I've been very quiet. I don't do a lot of talking because I'm letting God do the speaking. Proverbs, Proverbs 15, verses 1 and 2 says this. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs anger. The tongue. Of the wise adorn knowledge, but the mouth of a fool gushes folly. Mm -mm -mm. So James says something back in chapter one as we get ready to conclude this lesson. Oh, around verse 25, he says, but whoever looks in Intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it. And don't forget that they have what they have heard, but do it. They will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep their tight rein on their tongue deceive themselves. And their religion is worthless. Let the Lord put a tight rein on your tongue. Let the Lord lead God and direct you to speak words that will be a blessing. Oh, hallelujah. I got 12 words that I want to share with you. And these 12 words can transform your life if you use these words and sincerely mean them when you say them from your heart. You're going to say, oh man, what, what are these 12 words? The first one is please. Say please. Powerful word. The next two is thank you. Please and thank you. If I what was that? Borny, that big Borny, big Borny, the purple, the purple Borny said, please and thank you. Yeah. Please and thank you. That's what we're supposed to do. The next two words is I'm sorry. If you've done somebody wrong, just say, I'm, I'm sorry, and mean it from your heart. And these next three words is the greatest three words you can say to anybody if you truly believe it in your heart, if it's sincere. These three words. I love you. <laughs> I love you. That's it. And the final four words. And I ask people to do this all the time and I do it myself. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm truly praying for you. And don't mean it sarcastically. Mean it sincerely. And I tell you, if you say these 12 words often in a day, 
you'll be a blessing to a whole lot of people, especially yourself. Please and thank you. I'm sorry. I, I love you and I'm praying for you. None of those words will stir up trouble. None of those words will cause a fire. They will douse the fire. Thoughts to ponder as I close this lesson. Words carry weight. And what we say can affect others for a long time. I, I forgot to even talk about this. One of the illustrations Sandra's going to use today in her Sunday school like class is she going to have the kids take out some toothpaste and pour it onto a plate. And she's going to give them a spoon and tell them, now, put that toothpaste back into the tube. Yep. Once you say something out of your mouth, you can't put that thing back. Mm-mm-mm. Number two, ignoring the needs of maintaining control of one's speech is risky, self-destructive, and eternally destitute or destiny. It's a risky self-destruction to our eternal destiny. That's what it needs to say. Mm -hmm. Number three, we 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 should make sure every effort to control our tongue becomes because uncontrollable speech also destroys others. Number four, we should use our tongue and our words to praise God and to encourage others. And number five, uh, an apple tree can only produce apples. So what your words reveal about you. Oh, hallelujah. There's life and death in your tongue. And I don't know about you, but I want my tongue to be producing life. I want it to be under God's control. And so, as we get ready to end this lesson with prayer, I want us to pray that God help us to bring our tongue under his control. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we claim you as our Lord of our lives, but too often we withhold one area from your control. We have hurt others and disappointed you and embarrassed ourselves with our tongue. Give us the strength and the wisdom, God, Put our tongue under your control and help us to be pleasing with every word we say, every word we type, every word we text. In Jesus' name, do this not only for us, but bless others also, God. Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm, I'm ready to end this lesson on Facebook and we're going to go on to the conference call and, and have further discussion about the lesson. Um, let me say this. If you want to join us on the conference call for discussion, it's 619-639-4733. That's 619-639-4733. This is the God in the Midst radio. Get them radio. Um, but before I close this Facebook session, um, I want to offer you Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I want to show you how powerful the tongue is. The word of God says if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died for our sins and that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. But you got to 
Speak it, confess it, and believe it. Let us pray. Dear Father God, repeat after me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth. And believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life and to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe in your heart, you are now saved. May God richly bless you and then bless you and then bless you some more that you might be a blessing. Facebook, have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week.